this is technically a chapter two of the uh, ng todoroki fan fiction that i wrote a couple of weeks ago but only technically as i put a lot of references in it so that technically you don't have to watch it i would still appreciate it if you watch the first part so i wouldn't really count this as chapter two more like uh, the first one was the prologue and this is the actual chapter one i don't want to make a lot of stories that are continuous in fact i would like to avoid that but uh you know eh, people want more parts hello my darlings uh my name is sui and today i'm bringing another endeavor fan fiction i hope you enjoy it i hope you like it and I hope you comment something down below. This is the best way to support me more indirectly. And uh, share it around. Make, uh, the more people watch this video, the better. Uh, lastly, I have a merch store on the Patreon. If you want to support me more directly, the links are down in the description. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And let's dive right into it. You didn't know when it had started, and if you were honest with yourself, you didn't care. After all, you were happy. You had started out as an intern in Endeavor Zero Agency, and through a weird connection of circumstance, you managed to meet your boss at a vulnerable moment. And a weird friendship came from that. Nothing had really changed except that your internship turned into an actual job offer almost immediately. And that you were pretty much always sent on patrol in the suburbs around the border of the city. Was it boring? Maybe, if it weren't for the children. The rich kids of this part of town grew up so protected that just seeing a hero in their costume doing their job was exciting to them even if they fully knew that a villain would never attack here. This piece was only tainted by your own anxiety about your cone workers. Eventually one of them would have to notice that you were given the easy jobs. You yawned as you changed from your hero costume back to your civilian clothes. By now it was a little late in the evening. One of the children on your patrol route had a birthday party, and his family just had to invite the patrolling hero as both protection and honorable guest. At least you got a few slices of cake out of it. Once back in more comfortable clothes, you stretched yourself. You had went from hating your job to loving it. Then you heard a knock on the door. Quickly you went to answer it. Evening, said Endeavor. Your boss, after you opened it. Uh, hello, sir, you said with a gentle smile. I was hoping I could invite you for a few drinks tonight. Sure thing, boss. I'll be at your office in a minute. With a quick nod, your boss left. You didn't really want to get drunk tonight, so you needed to mentally prepare yourself. After splashing some water in your face from the changing room faucet, you walk the halls of Endeavor's hero agency until you reach your boss's secret office. You knock twice, then pause for a moment, and then knock three times. It was silly, but that was your secret code, so he knew it was you who was knocking. Come in. You heard his deep voice calling, and you entered. The room hasn't changed much, with the exception of additional trinkets on the shrine he had built in memory of his dead son, and a new rug. One you had suggested you should get. And Eric was already sitting at the table, and as per usual the flames in his face were absent, and he was wearing a blue Hawaiian shirt. Additionally, he was smiling which was new. If a year ago someone would have told you that not only would you work for the number one hero, but also be invited almost daily to drink with him, 
you would have left. Now, smiling yourself, you approached and then sat down. You look happy, sir. You paused. Um, Angie. You two had been doing this for a while, but the respect you felt for the man, despite his failings, was still strong enough to fuel the desire to call him sir. You took your own glass and took a sip. I don't know, he said. His eyes were somewhere behind you. Everything just feels numb. So he wasn't happy after all. You tilted your head. Numb? Angie, is something wrong? He blinked. While you were working as a backyard therapist for him during these little business meetings, he had never felt numb. You took another sip before he finally opened his mouth again. I have talked to you for a while now. You know that you remind me of my wife before I... Before I broke her. He still refused to look at you. And I don't know if it is the alcohol or... I'm just a desperate old man, but... Finally, his eyes met yours. Would you like to go out with me? You are glad you haven't taken another sip of sake. You would probably spit it right out. Him saying that felt like a gut punch. And you felt your face heat up almost immediately. When you didn't answer immediately, he began to apologize. I I'm sorry, I'm just a dumb old man. You shook your head. Angie, it's fine, it's just... You needed to suppress a grin out of sheer ridiculousness of the situation. You are still married. You wanted to add a comment about his children, but his kids were a sensitive subject. Despite your protest, however, you wanted this. No one else was giving him a chance after all. Enji Todoroki was a broken man. And over these past few weeks, you had enjoyed collecting the pieces and trying to put them back together. But maybe the real reason why you could do this with good conscience was because you haven't experienced his abuse and simply only heard from it. He closed his eyes for a moment, thinking. Come to my home tomorrow, after work. I will give you a shorter patrol so you have more time to prepare. You raised an eyebrow. That was bold of him. And with a cheapish grin you retorted. Usually I go on dates when I don't have work due to exhaustion. He chuckled darkly. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want you be exhausted before it even begins, huh? He paused to refill his glass. I don't remember your schedule. When do you have your next day off? You scratched your chin. Ah, uh, next Monday and Tuesday, because I have to go on patrol on Sunday. Monday it is then, he said. This would be the first time you two met outside of his secret office. Have you planned anything, Angie? He blushed. There's this wonderful sushi restaurant. It has five stars. Very expensive. Now you blushed yourself. I... I can't, I, I can't accept that, Angie. I would feel like I'm taking advantage of you. Please don't agree, please don't agree, please don't agree. Wait. Did that make you a gold digger? Nonsense. I invited you after all. You smiled, but on the inside, multiple scenarios played out in your head, which all ended in a critical failure. Surprisingly, a surprise attack by the League of Villains 
was a more tame outcome. In fact, you always wanted to fight a Nomu. Then it's settled, I guess, you said softly. Endeavor's face turned soft, and a smile came across his face. He knew how flawed he was, and he had tried everything to fix it these past few months. He wanted nothing more than to return to normalcy before his ambitions had ruined his family. Both of you knew how unhealthy this was, but for now, you both just wanted to enjoy yourself. You grabbed the bottle of sake and refilled your glass. I was wondering, Angie, yours with curiosity, what happened? He gave you a confused look. I want to know why this now. I know why me, sure, but not where this is coming from to begin with. And ever leaned forward, hand propped under his chin. I had a revelation since this mountain crumbled before me. You could see it in his face. He wouldn't give you a straight answer. And I had a long discussion. And an even longer time to think. He watched you empty your glass with a light glimmer in his eyes. Endeavor had told you a lot of his past sins in a lot of detail. And the fact he spoke so open about this with you made you think he deserved this chance for redemption. But you could also understand why he wouldn't get this chance from his family. You smiled and raised your glass. Well, let's sow the seeds of redemption, Angie. Together. <laughs>